The Proverbs chapter 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an adornment of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave, and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk thou not in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city she uttereth her word, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I, will, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Hi. The book of Proverbs is very different than any other book in the Old Testament. Whereas most of the books in the Old Testament deal with the teachings of the prophets and what the prophets have said relating to God's dealings with the people. Proverbs is classified as Hebrew wisdom literature. Uh, it is not basically the teachings of the prophets. It is the wise sayings, generally speaking, credited to Solomon. Some of them are short. Uh, most of them are like two lines a, as a proverb. Some of them are longer ones. Um, the vast majority of all of the chapters are ascribed to Moses. I think there's only two or three others that they're not sure of were assigned to maybe somebody else. There, This is written as though it is a father talking to his son, trying to impress upon the son the need for righteous living and staying away from anything that's morally corrupt, anything that is terrible, because of the destruction that will come upon the young man in the eternities and in life to some degree if he doesn't do the things he's supposed to do. It is how best to live your life around other people and trying to get the young man to understand the that there is a vast difference between knowledge, which is facts, and wisdom, which is how to apply the facts in and around imperfect human beings who may have vastly different attitudes towards life, 
very different life experience, very different ways of behaving, very different ways of looking at things in a way that where you can get done what you need to do without having insurmountable problems because of the way in which you're doing it because you're wise enough to understand that since you have to work with people you also have to work with the faults, problems, attitudes of other people. And this is what he's, this is what the teacher of the Proverbs is trying to get across. Now, some of them again are very short, some of them are very long, but they're basically trying to educate you how to use the knowledge that you have and so most of this is generally uh, counsel given simply and straightforwardly, although sometimes you don't really understand it because they use figures and terms that we don't normally understand or use ourselves. Generally speaking, North American people think, and most modern people, and I'm going to say modern English-speaking people, people from modern developed countries, tend to think in what is called the Greek tradition, and that is we describe things in terms of facts. We say God is powerful, God is mighty. Whereas in the Middle Eastern tradition, which is how this literature is written, Middle Eastern, they would just say God, they, would, they wouldn't even think of saying that God is powerful, God is almighty. That, that would never occur to them in most of the situations, what they would say is, God is a shepherd. Uh, God is running water. They describe things in, in terms that are similar to something they would like you to understand. They describe it in terms of an image, not a fact, not an attribute. And so when they describe something, you need to understand that for the Hebrew people, and that the people who write their literature, that the description, the end description of what they're trying to get to is the important part, not the facts, not the statements they use to get there. They want you to understand that Heavenly Father is all wise, all knowing, all caring, willing to look after everybody, sacrifice himself if necessary for everybody, and that is what a shepherd is. So they would describe him as a shepherd. Whereas in the North American tradition, in the European tradition, we might say, well, God is all-wise, all-powerful, he's willing to do this and that and the other and all the rest of it. And our, our individual facts have to be correct. And we allow that if we have all the individual facts correct, then the total sum of the facts will be correct. In Hebrew literature, if the overall impression is correct, then the individual facts needed to get to that impression do not need to be perfectly accurate. It makes for interesting reading when you read and try to understand it because we need even we need to have a, these things sort of translated for us to some extent. The words, for instance, it says here uh, the dark sayings. Now, to us, the dark saying is basically some secret, some terrible news, uh, something ominous. To them, it simply means a, a riddle or a puzzle or something not directly known easily. Uh, there are, and there are many, many, many things that fall into that category that are not ominous, not terrible, sometimes very, very obvious, but sometimes they, there's a meaning there that we don't, often get. So we'll, we'll go through these. There are 31 chapters and uh, they're fairly straightforward. There's a lot to begin. It would pay you to read this through two or three times and to reread it on a regular basis because as you go through the learning curve on the Proverbs and as you understand more, you will understand each chapter at a deeper and deeper level as you read it more and more, the more you understand. That's the way they're written. So the more you understand, the more you will understand the next time. A fabulous amount of learning that way.